بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, all his companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all and to bless every single one of us. Ameen. My beloved brothers and sisters, you and I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created man from dust. He created man from soil. One might say, well, there is a difference between the two. The reality is these are different stages within the creation of man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to use two components, dust and water. So if you take a careful look at it, it was very possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to use gold to create man or to use silver to create man or platinum or anything that today we would consider valuable. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to use dust or soil. And on top of that, when you and I are unclean, we would use water to cleanse ourselves. If there is no water available, we are asked to use dust. It will cleanse you. Similarly, we do know that part of the component of man is water. A lot of what we have in us is actually water. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand that he has chosen these two in order to create us for a reason. Similarly, when he created a female, it was his choice. Before I get to that, let me explain to you that there is nothing insulting in being created from dust. Someone says, what were you made from? Now you cannot say gold, you can't say US dollars, you can't say anything else. You have to say dust, that's it. It is not an insult to you that Allah chose to create you from dust. Your value is determined by what you are today and who you are today and now. And when you go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what deeds you are going to take back, that is what your value is determined by. So why did Allah choose to create me from dust? Like I said, many reasons. We were souls at one stage. Before we were given bodies, we were all souls. Allah wanted to test these souls. So he gave you a uniform to say, I have a place. But in order to get there for the examination, you need to wear something known as a body. I'm going to put the soul into that body for a short period of time. Some of the limbs and organs you might lose while you are in that examination. And some of them you may lose towards the end of the exam, knowing that the whole lot you're going to leave behind when you finally return to us. This is why when you and I die, we are taught to bury the body back into the soil and to leave a little gap between the body and where the soil actually goes on top. And the reason is that oxygen that is trapped there is what is used to decompose the body. If there was no oxygen there, there will be no combustion. There will be no decomposition. So that's one of the reasons why you have to leave a gap of oxygen before you actually put the soil. You cannot put the soil or it is not correct to put the soil straight onto the body. My beloved brothers and sisters, a female is created from the rib of man, according to the hadith sahih of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. Now, sometimes you have women who start arguing, no, that narration is like this, and that man is like this, na'udhu billah. It's insulting to say we are from a rib. I want to tell you, if you think it is insulting to be created from a rib, it is even more insulting to be created from dust. So choose which one you want, one of the two. You either say dust or a rib. I think it's a greater honor to be created from a rib, from something living. Hence the name Hawa or Eve. It means one who was created from something living. Subhanallah. This is an amazing, amazing creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me get to the point I want to raise. When we say dust, it's valueless. When you have dust on your motor vehicle, you cannot wait to wash it. Especially if that motor vehicle is a dark color. 
If you have dust in your room, it means there's something wrong. But you were created from dust. Look at how we look at dust so low. But with us, we suddenly think we're a big, big deal. And Allah raises this with us. You know, we read surahs in the Quran. If I were to tell you, have any of you read Surah Yasin? The majority would say, yes, we've read it. And we haven't just read it once, we read it often. But if I were to tell you, do you know the meaning? Some will say yes. The bulk will probably say no. And if I were to tell you, have you ever pondered over the meaning? I think most of us would say no. There is a verse there that is repeated. Listen to it. أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الْإِنسَانُ أَنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُ مِن نُطْفَةٍ فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُبِينٌ Does man not realize, does man not see that we created him from a droplet of semen? Now one might ask, just now you said dust, now you're saying droplet of semen. The original creation from dust. The reproduction, Allah chose a certain method of reproduction, that's his system. So that is a droplet of semen. And Allah says, has man not seen that he was created from a droplet of semen? And then suddenly, after being one little nucleus and multiplying, becoming a little zygote, an embryo, and thereafter growing by the will of Allah, and you were born, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse of the Quran, وَاللَّهُ أَخْرَجَكُمْ مِّن بُطُونِ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا Indeed, it was Allah who took you out of the wombs of your mothers. You knew nothing. You knew absolutely nothing. You couldn't even speak. And you don't even remember that moment. None of us here can remember the moment we were born. It's because as much as you know how you were born and when you came onto the earth, you will not be able to remember. Allah says, in order to show you, O oh man, that this life is all about a test. It's a test. So getting back to that verse, when we were born, we knew not how to speak. But when we learned how to speak, we started swearing. A'udhu billah. We started lying. Astaghfirullah. We started speaking bad. And Allah says, hang on. We taught you how to talk in order that you do not lie. In order that you do not swear. In order that you do not cheat. And you are going exactly into cheating and lying and stealing. So you don't even know why you were made. So Allah says at the beginning that has man not seen we created him from a droplet of semen. And then Allah says beautifully and powerfully. فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُبِينٌ Suddenly, when he gains a little bit of ability to speak, a little bit of money, a little bit of authority, he starts becoming so argumentative. He starts arguing about what? Number one, about us. Astaghfirullah. There are people who claim Allah does not exist. That's one. But worse than that are those who claim Allah exists, but they don't follow, they don't obey. Subhanallah. So Allah says, look at man. He knows he was nothing. In fact, you know Surah Al-Dahr. I'm sure we read it in this masjid. Mostly all the Fridays we try to read the sunnah of Surah Al-Dahr, Surah As-Sajda and so on. You will hear the first verse. I'm sure we've heard it. هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينٌ مِّنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا has man not passed through a phase when he was nothing even mentionable, nothing worth mentioning. Look, if I am 45 years old, for example, where was I 46 years ago? Nowhere. Where was I 50 years ago? Definitely nowhere. Where was I 100 years ago? And I come onto the earth and I have the audacity to start swearing, cheating, lying, deceiving, lying about Allah and committing sin against Allah, knowing fully well that I'm going to return to the same Allah and knowing that the test is going to come to an end and I'm busy writing the wrong answers and I know what the right answers are. Astaghfirullah. That's why Allah says in Surah Yasin, look at man, look at him. You know, when you and I see a young person growing up and we saw them as children and suddenly, you know, they perhaps used to talk and so on. When they grow big and they develop horns, you know what that means? They develop horns. They become wild. They want to argue and fight. They'll come to you as an elderly person and swear you. They will disrespect you in full view of the whole public. And the only thing you can say in your mind is, I feel sorry for this little child here who really doesn't know that they were a droplet of semen at one stage and they were born in such a way that if no one managed them, they would have died. 
Astaghfirullah. And look at him today. He wants to come and argue and fight. And he wants to come and put his point forth in the most disrespectful manner. Where? Where is man? What happened to him? He was such a cool, calm youngster a long time back. And suddenly, now that he's been given the opportunity to show his true colors, he has begun to show those true colors. We always say, money does not spoil you. It only gives you the opportunity to show who you really were always. If you were a really calm person, you really love Allah, you had good character and conduct, no matter how much money you have, you will always remain calm and you will always understand this is from Allah. I'm a person humble. It will bring you closer to Allah. But if you always had within you this complex that needed to be shown, but because you didn't have money or authority, you could not show it. The day you got it, that's the day you started showing everything. Well, these are your true colors. Allah says, فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُبِينٌ Look, suddenly he became so argumentative. He became so sinful. He became such that he's transgressing day and night. How can man do that? Let's go back to Surah Al-Dahr. I mentioned the verse where Allah says there was a time when man, you and I, we were nothing even mentionable. We couldn't even be mentioned. If someone said there was a baby born or there is a fetus, someone might say, what is the gender? You could either say it is a he or a she, a male or a female. Email. But before that, before you even came into that particular place, people could not refer to you as he or she. They could not even refer to you as it. It. They couldn't even say it because they don't even know. You were not even there. The child you might have after five years, you don't even know. So subhanallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. The very next verse, Allah says, إِنَّا خَلَقُنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِن نُطْفَةٍ أَمْشَاجٍ نَبْتَلِيهِ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ سَمِيعًا بَصِيرًا Allahu Akbar. Allah says, do you know we created man from a droplet of semen? Here goes once again. This is another verse. The first one was Surah Yaseen. This is the second verse of Surah Al-Dahr where Allah says, indeed we created man from a droplet of semen. A droplet of semen that is mixed, you know, a mixed droplet of semen. You have male and female, the gametes fuse, creating a little zygote, subhanallah. And what would happen? A fetus is there. Amazing. That's the will of Allah. Allah says, in order to test him. Why did Allah make you? Allah made you in order to test you. Like I said, this is a testing ground 70 years. If you went before that, that was the will of Allah. If you went after that, also the will of Allah, but you had a bonus. Subhanallah, you had a bonus because now you know I'm old. I better prepare to meet with Allah. There is no way that you are going to be able to run away from Allah. You might run away from a man. You might run away from the truth in this world. You might get away with lying and cheating in this dunya. That's fine. Allah says, don't worry. You fail the test. When you come to us, we're going to show you what it's all about. Take it easy. We're going to show you. If you're a winner, you will recollect while you are living. And you will turn back to us while you are living. And you will humble yourself once again. And you will bring yourself down to the ground once again. But if not, it's not going to reduce anything from us. In another verse, Allah says, Have they not seen Ad and Thamud, the previous nations? In another verse, He says, Have they not seen the Pharaoh? These people and these nations were more powerful than you are. But we punished them. They thought they were gods besides us, Allah says. Pharaoh was also created from a droplet of semen, like Allah says. And what did he do? When he grew a little bit older, he got a little bit of power, a little bit of money, authority. He started saying, Ana rabbukumul a'la. I am your God, the highest. وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ يَا أَيُّهَا الْمَلَأُ مَا عَلِمْتُ لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرِي Fir'aun told his cronies and his people, Oh my people, I don't know of another God for you besides me. Imagine. Yet he knows he was created from a droplet of semen. He too died. So Allah says, hang on, man, we created you from a droplet of semen that was mixed and we gave you the f in order to test you. We created you in order to test you. That is why we gave you your faculties of hearing and seeing. Why did Allah give me ears? It's part of the test. You cannot enter an exam room and tell me you don't have a pen or a, or a pencil. You cannot enter an exam room without a paper. So yours, your examination and mine is of a life. And one of the things you need, hearing, the faculty of hearing, the faculty of seeing. Subhanallah. It's a gift of Allah. If Allah has taken it away, He will deal with you in a different way. But 
For the rest of us, subhanallah, Allah says, I gave you these faculties as part of your test. So when you're young, you cannot even see clearly as a little baby. A week, few weeks later, you start seeing shapes. A little while later, you start recognizing. And after that, you might cry when you see something you don't recognize. Part of Allah's plan. So Allah says, can you worship that which you don't recognize as your deity, as your God? Look at man. We made him. And now suddenly, he worships all the other things. Allah says, you know, when you came onto this earth, you came with nothing. So don't pretend like your entire life is all about money and making money to the degree that you employ haram and disallowed methods to earn money. It's not wrong to earn. Part of our test is to earn halal. It's a reward to go out and stay away from haram is a big reward. To go out and do something that is purely halal is a big reward. But that's not your main aim. That's only to help you live through. It's like someone saying, you know, when we write our examination, you need ink, the ink for the pen. So now you come with five buckets of ink and you put it next to your table. They're all going to laugh at you. How long do you want to write for here? You're going to be writing for 30 minutes. You only need one small pot of ink. You came with five buckets. That's how we treat money. You made the money. You made your little, you know, a container of ink. And now you want a bucket and two buckets and five buckets. You're going to finish your exam and that ink is going to be spilt and it's going to mess everybody who you left behind. That's what happens. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. If it comes in a halal way, alhamdulillah. If not, trust me, you don't need it. You don't need it. You will fail your test. You might leave, you might live a life of luxury, leave a lot behind, but there will be no blessing in it. There will be destruction in it. So this is Allah. Allah says, I gave you your faculty of hearing and seeing in order to test you. And I have guided you as you grew older. I showed you what is right, what is wrong. You know what is right and what is wrong. You know you're going to come back to us. So don't choose the wrong path. If you choose it, you might get away with it in this world. But if we choose, we might even punish you in this world. Wait. It's a time. Allah gives a chance to people. Allah gives one chance, two chances. He has a quota of chances. After those chances are over, the punishment descends. The wrath comes down. When it comes down, nothing can stop it. <laughs> when the fixed time of Allah comes, it will never ever be delayed. He knows. And this is not only speaking about death, anything appointed by Allah. When he appoints, this is it, that's it. You will not be able to change it. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warning us and telling us, listen, you know what is right or wrong. The next verse says, <laughs> We have indeed guided the people to the paths. What are the paths? You know, this is the path of gratitude. This is the path of ingratitude. This is the path of belief. This is the path of disbelief. This is the path of the pleasure of Allah. This is the path of the displeasure of Allah. And we put you at the beginning of the road. When you're at the beginning of the road, you start walking. You know which way it is, but you want to take a shortcut. To what? To fame, to popularity, to money, to anything else. If it is wrong, trust me, you're heading in the wrong direction. It's not all about things that will happen in this world while transgressing the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is about what you choose to do and decide to do by the help of Allah. This is why in Surah Al-Fatiha, every time we repeat, إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ That's the only dua in Surah Al-Fatiha. It's the only supplication in Surah Al-Fatiha. And it is compulsory to repeat it at least 17 times a day or more. In fact, much more. Subhanallah. Why? Because Allah is reminding you, listen, your test is all about owner of the day of judgment. You alone we worship. You alone we seek for help. Guide us to the straight path. That's what it is. Why do you repeat Surah Al-Fatiha? Why is it so important? Why is it melodious? Why do your children, when they are two years old and three, start repeating Surah Al-Fatiha if they've heard it. They start saying it again. You find a small baby, as they grow a little bit, they listen within the Muslim home to Surah Al-Fatiha and they start repeating it. That's the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A child will repeat. Let's keep our homes alive, inshallah, with beautiful words of Allah, rather than them learning all the latest Bollywood, Hollywood songs and so on when they don't even know Surah Al-Fatiha. My brothers and sisters, this is Allah. So Allah says, oh man, don't forget where you came from. Don't ever, no matter who you are today, don't forget where you're, 
your beginnings were. Firstly, they were nowhere. After that, it was a little nucleus. After that, it came in the form of a droplet of semen. After that, it was mixed with the ova, ovum. Or as male and female getting together, they say the gametes fuse, okay? Thereafter, you started multiplying in the womb of your belly, or of your mom, your mother. Everyone seated here and everyone who's going to listen to this today or another day, it's a reality. That's how you started. So don't develop horns for the sake of Allah. You can be a president. You can be an ambassador. You can be a manager. You can be a CEO. You can be a multi-millionaire, billionaire. Don't forget your beginnings. And more importantly, don't forget your ending. Remember this. That's what life is all about. So people are thinking to themselves, you know what? It's all about just uh, this world. That's it. I, I just live. It's only got to do with this world. You know, we're dead and we're alive. That's it. Enjoy. You live once. That's it. Those are the losers. Don't join them. Do not. Remember your beginnings. In fact, with a lot of us, remember the times when you had nothing. Perhaps no shoes. Perhaps no clothing. Perhaps nothing at all. Remember that. Always be grateful. Like Allah says, we showed you the path of gratitude and ingratitude. If you want to be ungrateful, you're not going to harm people. You're not going to harm Allah. You are harming yourself. What is ingratitude? I do good to you. As a result of that, you do bad to me. Allah did good to us. As a result of that, we do bad to Allah. Another human being does good to us somewhere in the past, somewhere in history. And as a result of that, we do bad to them. We forget goodness. Yet the Quran says, Hal ihsani illa al -ihsan. For a true believer, can the recompense of goodness be anything besides goodness? Someone did good to you. Wow, you do even better to them. A man helped you come on your feet. When you're on your feet, you help him fly. Subhanallah. Amazing. That is gratitude. And if you don't show gratitude to man, the hadith says you will never be able to show gratitude to Allah. Because when man does good to you, it's clear. You saw the man give you. You saw the man help you. If you appreciate that, you will understand where Allah fits in that picture. This was physical. So you understand the unseen only when you've understood the physical. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. The message that I have for myself and yourselves today is let's never forget the beginnings. Let's never forget how we were some time back, whether it was before birth, during birth, immediately after birth. And let's look at where we are today. Thank Allah. Be thankful. Don't show ungratefulness. Don't be from amongst those who are filled with ingratitude. No. When we die, wallahi, we want to die having pleased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't want to die on the wrong side. The last thing is, brothers and sisters, there is always hope. What is that hope? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always says, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ If you really want success, O you who believe, turn to Allah in repentance. Repent. Ask Allah's forgiveness. He will wipe out whatever you've done in the past. He will start a new slate for you. You become a person very close to Allah through repentance. So remember, do not undervalue and underestimate repentance, tawbah. Seeking the forgiveness of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all in this world and the next. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.